Act Three. Suite seven hundred and nineteen, at the Plaza. It is three o'clock on a warm Saturday afternoon in the spring. The living room is bedecked with vases and baskets of flowers, and the bedroom, one open valise containing a young woman's street clothes, rests on the floor. A very large box, which had held a wedding dress, rests on the luggage rack, and a man's white suit lies on the bed. A fur wrap and gloves are thrown over the back of the sofa. As the light comes up, Norma Hubley is at the phone in the bedroom, impatiently tapping the receiver. She is dressed in a formal cocktail dress and a large hat, looking her very best as any woman would want to on her daughter's wedding day. But she is extremely nervous and harassed, and with good cause, as we'll soon find out. No, no, everything's fine. Yes, we're coming right down. Yes, you're right. It certainly is the big day. Uh, Mr. Eisler, is my husband there? Would you please? Oh, well, I'd like to wish you the very best of luck, too. Borden's a wonderful boy. Well, they're both wonderful kids. Um, no, no, she's as calm as a cucumber. That's the younger generation, I guess. Yes, everything seems to be going along beautifully, absolutely beautifully. Oh, thank you. Ugh, Roy, you'd better get up here right away. We're in big trouble. And don't ask questions, just get up here. Hope you're not drunk, because I can't handle this alone. Don't say anything. Just smile and walk leisurely out the door. And then get the hell up here as fast as you can. <sighs> All right, Mimsy, your father's on his way up. Now I want you to come out of that bathroom and get married. Do you hear me? I've had enough of this nonsense. Unlock that door. <sighs> Mimsy, darling, please come downstairs and get married. You know your father's temper. I know what you're going through. Now, oh, sweetheart, you're just nervous. Everyone goes through that on their wedding day. It's going to be all right, darling. You love Borden and he loves you. You're both going to have a wonderful future. So please come out of the bathroom. Oh, Mimsy, if you don't care about your life, think about mine. Your father will kill me. Oh, God, he's here. Mimsy, Mimsy, please spare me this. If you want, I'll have it annulled next week, but please come out and get married. All right, I'm letting your father in, and heaven help the three of us. Why are you standing there? There are 68 people down there drinking my liquor. If there's gonna be a wedding, let's have a wedding. Come on! Didn't you hear what I said? There's another couple waiting to use the green room. Come on! Let's go! Uh, Roy, could you sit down a minute? I want to talk to you about something. You want to talk now? You've had 21 years to talk while she was growing up. I'll talk to you when they're in Bermuda. Can we please have a wedding? We can't have a wedding until you and I have a talk. Are you crazy? Well, you and I are talking here. There are four musicians playing downstairs for $70 an hour. I'll talk to you when we're dancing. Come on, get Mimsy and let's go. That's what I want to talk to you about. Uh, Mimsy! <sighs> Sit down. You're not going to like this. Is she sick? She's not sick, exactly. What do you mean, she's not sick, exactly? Either she's sick or she's not sick. Is she sick? She's not sick. Then let's have a wedding. Mimsy, there's $200 worth of cocktail frankfurters down there getting cold. Mimsy! Where's Mimsy? <sighs> Promise me you're not going to blame me. Blame you for what? What did you do? I didn't do anything, but I don't want to get blamed for it. What's going on here? Are you going to tell me where Mimsy is? Are you going to take an oath you're not going to blame me? I take it, I take it. Now where the hell is Mimsy? <sighs> she's locked herself in the bathroom, she's not coming out, and she's not getting married. 
Oh, no kidding. Where is she? Ugh, he doesn't believe me. I'll kill myself. Mimsy. Mimsy. Mimsy! All right, what did you say to her? Oh, I knew it. I knew you'd blame me. Oh, you took an oath. God will punish you. I'm not blaming you. I just want to know what stupid thing you said to her that made her do this. I didn't say a word. I was putting on my lipstick. She was in the bathroom. I heard the door go click. It was locked. My whole life was over. What do you want from me? And you didn't say a word. Nothing. I see. In other words, you're trying to tell me that a normal, healthy, intelligent 21-year-old college graduate who has driven me crazy the last 18 months with wedding lists, floral arrangements, and choices of assorted hors d'oeuvres has suddenly decided to spend this, the most important day of her life, locked in the Plaza Hotel John. Yes! 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 You must have said something! <sighs> Roy? Roy, what are you going to do? First, I'm getting the college graduate out of the bathroom, then we're going to have a wedding. And then you and I are going to have a big talk. Mimsy, this is your father. I want you and your $400 wedding dress out of there in five seconds. Don't threaten her. She'll never come out if you threaten her. I've got 68 guests, nine waiters, four musicians, and a boy with a wedding license waiting downstairs. There is no time to be diplomatic. Mimsy, are you coming out or do we have to have the wedding in this bathroom? Will you lower your voice? Everyone will hear us. How long do you think we can keep this a secret? As soon as that boy says, I do, and there's no one standing next to him, they're going to suspect something. You can't stay in there forever, Mimsy. They only have the room until six o'clock. You hear me? Roy, Will you please try to control yourself? All right, all right. I'll stay here and control myself. You go downstairs and marry the short, skinny kid. What's the matter with you? Don't you realize what's happening? Yes, I realize what's happening. Our daughter is nervous, frightened, and scared. Scared to death. Of what? Of what? She's been screaming for two years. If he doesn't ask her to marry him, she'll throw herself off the Guggenheim Museum. What is she scared of? I don't know. Maybe <sighs> she's had second thoughts about the whole thing. Second thoughts? This is no time to be having second thoughts. It cost me $8,000 for the first thoughts. Mimsy. Mimsy, open that door. Is that all you care about? What it's costing you? Aren't you concerned about your daughter's happiness? Yes, yes, I'm concerned about my daughter's happiness. I'm also concerned about that boy waiting downstairs, a decent, respectable, intelligent young man who I hope one day is going to teach that daughter of mine to grow up. You haven't the faintest idea of what's going through her mind right now. Uh, do you? But, but it could be anything. I don't know. Maybe she thinks she's not good enough for him? Why? What is he? Some kind of Greek god? He's a plain kid. Nothing. That's ridiculous. Oh, Mimsy! Mimsy, open this door! Maybe she's not in there. Oh, she's in there. Oh, God. I think I'm having a heart attack. I don't hear a peep out of her. Is there a window in here? Oh, maybe she tried something crazy. That's right. Tell a woman who's having a heart attack that her daughter jumped out the window. Take a look through that keyhole. I want to make sure she's in there. Oh, she's in there, I tell you. Ugh, look at this. My hand keeps bouncing off my chest. Are you going to look in there and see if she's all right, or am I going to call the house detective? Why don't you look? Maybe... Maybe she's taking a bath. Pfft, two minutes before her own wedding? What wedding? She just called it off. Wouldn't I have heard the water running? Oh, with that hat, you couldn't hear Niagara Falls. Are you going to look to see what your daughter's doing in the bathroom, or do I have to ask a stranger? I'll look. I'll look. I'll look. Oh, my God. What's the matter? Oh, I ripped my stockings. Is she in there? She's in there. She's in there. Where am I going to get another pair of stockings now? How am I going to go to the wedding with torn stockings? If she doesn't show up, who's going to look at you? Let me get down here. Oh, there she is, sitting there and crying. I told you she was in there. I'm the, the only one in my family to have a daughter married in the plaza, and I have torn stockings. 
Mimsy, I can see you. <laughs> Mimsy, do you hear me? Don't turn away from me when I'm talking to you, Mimsy. Oh, maybe I could run across to Bergdorf's. They have nice stockings. Do you want me to break down this door, Mimsy? Is that what you want? Because that's what I'm going to do if you're not out here in five seconds. Oh, stop crying on your dress. Use the towel. Hey, Roy, I don't, I don't have any money. Give me four dollars. I'll be back in ten minutes. In ten minutes, she'll be a married woman because I've had enough of this nonsense. All right, Mimsy, stand in the shower because I'm breaking down this door. Roy, don't get crazy. Get out of my way. Roy, she'll come out. Just talk nicely oh, to her. Oh, we already had a nice talking. Now we're going to have some door breaking. All right, Mimsy, I'm coming in. No, Roy, don't. Don't. Oh. 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 Get a doctor. Oh, I knew oh. it. I knew it. Oh, don't tell me I knew it. Just get a doctor. <clears throat> I'm not coming in, Mimsy, because my arm is broken. Let me see it. Can you move your fingers? Are you happy now? Your mother has torn stockings and your father has a broken arm. How much longer is this going to go on? It's not broken. You can move your fingers. Now give me four dollars with your other hand. I have to get stockings. Are, are you crazy moving my broken arm? Fine. Two dollars. I'll get a cheap pair. I'm not carrying any cash today. Rent it. Everything here is rented. I can't rent stockings. Don't you even have a charge plate? Wait in the green room. You're no use to me here. Go. Wait in the green room. With torn stockings? Or stand behind the rented potted plant. They're going to call from downstairs any second asking where the bride is. And I'm the one who's going to have to speak to them. Me, me, me. That's them. You. You speak to them. What happened to me, me, me? Oh, answer it. Answer it. What am I going to say to them? I don't know. Maybe something will come to you as you're talking. Hello? Oh, Mr. Eisler. Yes, it certainly is the big moment. Stall him, stall him. Just keep stalling him. Whatever you do, stall him. Oh, yes, we'll be down in two minutes. Uh, are you crazy? What did you say that for? I told you to stall. I stalled him. Oh. You got two minutes. What do you want from me? You always panic. The minute there's a little crisis, you always go to pieces and panic. Don't you wave your broken arm at me. Why don't you use it to get your daughter out of the bathroom? Oh, I could say something to you right now. Oh, then why don't you say it? Because it would lead to a fight, and I don't want to spoil this day for you. Mimsy, this is your father speaking. I think you know I'm not a violent man. I can be stern and strict, but I have never once been violent, except when I'm angry. And I am really angry now, Mimsy. You can ask your mother. Mimsy... This is your mother speaking. It's true, darling. Your father is very angry. This is your father again, Mimsy. If you have a problem you want to discuss, unlock the door and we'll discuss it. I'm not going to ask you this again, Mimsy. I've reached the end of my patience. I'm going to count to three. And by God, I'm warning you, young lady. By the time I've reached three, this door better be open. All right. One. <clears throat> Two, three! Where did we fail her? We didn't fail her. They're playing Here Comes the Bride downstairs, and she's barricaded in a toilet. We must have failed her. All right, if it makes you any happier, we failed her. You work, and you dream, and you hope, and you save your whole life for this day, and in one click of a door, suddenly everything crumbles. Why? What's the answer? It's not your fault, Roy. Stop blaming yourself. I'm not blaming myself. I know I've done my best. What does that mean? It means we're not perfect. We make mistakes. We're only human. I've done my best, and we failed her. Meaning I didn't do my best? I didn't say that. I, I don't know what your best is. Only you know what your best is. Did you do your best? Yes, I did my best. And I did my best. Then we both did our best. So it's not our fault. That's what I said before. Unless 
One of us didn't do our best. Oh, I don't want to discuss it anymore. All right, well then what are we going to do? I'm having a heart attack. You come up with something. How? All right, I'll go down and tell them. Tell them? Tell them what? I don't know. Those people down there deserve some kind of explanation. They got all dressed up, didn't they? What are you going to say? You're going to tell them that my daughter is not going to marry their son? And that she's locked herself in the bathroom? What do you want me to do? Start off with two good jokes? They're going to find out sometime, aren't they? I'll tell you what you're going to do. If she's not out there in five minutes, we're going to go out the back door and move to Seattle, Washington. Oh, you don't think I'll ever be able to show my face in the city again, do you? Roy? Would you believe it? Last night, I cried. Oh, yeah, I turned my head into the pillow and lay there in the dark crying because today I was losing my little girl. Some stranger was coming and taking my little girl, Mimsy, away from me, so I turned my back to you and I cried. <laughs> Wait till you hear what goes on tonight. Should have invited your cousin Lily. She wished this on me, I know it. <laughs> Do you find something funny in all this? Yes. I do find something funny in this. I find it funny that I hired a photographer for $300. I find it hysterical that the wedding pictures are going to be of you and me in front of a locked bathroom. All right, I'm through sitting and waiting for that door to open. Roy, what are you doing? What do you think I'm doing? The window? Well, if you're jumping, I'm going with you. You're not leaving me here alone. I'm going to crawl out on that ledge and get in through the bathroom window. Are you crazy? It's seven stories up. You'll kill yourself. It's four steps, that's all. It's no problem. I'm telling you, now will you let go of me? Roy, no. Don't do this. We'll leave her in the mm. bathroom. Let the hotel worry about her. Don't go out on the ledge. You're going to rip my coat. Let go or you're going to rip my coat. Hey, you in there. Are you happy now? Your mother's got torn stockings, and your father's got a rented, ripped coat. Some wedding it's gonna be. Get out of my way. Oh, I'm getting dizzy. I think I'm gonna pass out. You can pass out after the wedding. Call room service. I want to double scotch the minute I get back. Oh, he'll... Oh, he'll kill himself. He'll fall and kill himself. That's the way my luck's been going all day. I'm not going to look. I'll just wait until I hear a scream. Ah! Oh, I thought it was him. Oh, God, what am I going to say? Hello? Oh, Mr. Eisler, yes, we're coming. Oh, my husband's getting mimsy now. We'll be right down. Oh, have some more hors d'oeuvre. Oh, well, thank you. It, it certainly is the happiest day of my life. No, I'm going to tell him I've got a husband dangling over 59th Street. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. It had to happen. Are you all right, Roy? Roy? Oh, he's not all right. He fell. He fell. He fell. He fell. He's dead. I know it. Oh, he's laying there in a puddle in front of Trader Vic's. Whew. I'm passing out. This time, I'm really passing out. Oh, I'm coming. I'm coming. Help me, whoever you are. Help me. Oh, please, somebody help me, please. Roy? <sighs> She locked the window, too. I had to climb in through her strange bedroom. <clears throat> there may be a lawsuit. Oh, don't yell at her. Don't get her more upset. <gasps> don't get her upset? I'm hanging seven stories from a gargoyle and pouring rain, and you want me to worry about her? 
You know what she's doing in there. She's playing with her false eyelashes. I'm out there fighting for my life with pigeons, and she's playing with eyelashes. I've already made up my mind. The minute I get my hands on her, I'm gonna kill her. Once I show her the wedding bills, and I show the jury, no one on earth would convict me. And if by some miracle she survives, let there be no talk of wedding. She could go into a convent. Let her become a librarian with those thick glasses and a pencil in her hair. I'm not paying for any more canceled weddings. Now get her out of there, or I start to burn these newspapers and smoke her out. I'll get her out. I'll get her out. <sighs> Mimsy? Mimsy, please! Mimsy, you want to destroy a family? You want a scandal? You want a story in the daily news? Is that what you want? Is it? Open this door! Open it! Oh, uh, Roy? Promise you won't get hysterical. What did you do? I broke my diamond ring. Your good diamond ring? How many do I have? Oh. Hey, you with the false eyelashes! You want to see a broken diamond ring? You want to see $800 worth of crushed baguettes? Here, here, this is a worthless family heirloom. And this is a diamond bathroom door. <laughs> do you know what I'm going to do now? Do you have any idea? I'm going to wash my hands of the entire Eisler Hubley wedding. You can take all the Eislers and the hors d'oeuvres and go to Central Park and have $8,000 picnics. I'm going down to the oak room with my broken arm, with my drenched, renty rip suit, and I'm going to get blind. I don't mean drunk. I mean totally blind because I don't want to see you or your crazy daughter again if I live to be a thousand. Oh, that's right. Run out on me. Run out on your daughter. Run out on everyone just when they need you. Oh, you don't need me. You need a rhinoceros with a blowtorch because no one else can get through that door. Oh, I'll tell you who can get into that bathroom. Someone with love and understanding. Someone who cares about that poor kid who's going through some terrible decision now and needs help. Help that only you can give her and that I can give her. That's who can get into that bathroom now. <clears throat> Fine. <clears throat> Mimsy? <laughs> this is Daddy. Is something wrong, dear? <laughs> I want to help you, darling. Mother and I both do, but how can we help you if you won't talk to us? <laughs> Mimsy? Can you hear me? Maybe she's too choked up to talk. Mimsy, if you can hear me, knock twice for yes, once for no. Good. Good. Now, Mimsy, we want to ask you a very, very important question. You want to marry Borden, or don't you? She said yes. She said no. It was two knocks. Two knocks is yes. She wants to marry him. It wasn't a double knock yes. It was two single no knocks. She doesn't want to marry him. Oh, don't tell me she doesn't want to marry him. I heard her distinctly knock yes. She went, yes, I want to marry him. It wasn't. It was. That's no twice. She's not marrying him. Ask her again. Mimsy, what did you say? Yes or no? All right, there it is in plain English. Pfft, you never could talk to your own daughter. Mimsy, this is not a good way to have a conversation. You're going to hurt your knuckles. Will you come out and talk to us? <laughs> Mimsy, please. Oh, don't you understand? It's probably something she can't discuss with her father. There are times a daughter wants to be alone with her mother. <sighs> Mimsy, do you want me to come in there and talk to you? Just the two of us, sweetheart. Tell me, darling, is that what you want? <sighs> what? What does that say? <sighs> I would rather talk to Daddy. <clears throat> I, um, I'll try not to be too long. <laughs> I would rather talk to Daddy. 
Or did she have to write it on toilet paper? <sighs> well, maybe I didn't do my best. I thought we had such a good relationship. Friends. Everyone thought we were friends, not mother and daughter. <sighs> I try to do everything right. I try to teach her that there could be more than just love between a mother and daughter. There can be trust and respect and friendship and understanding. You know, Mimsy, just because I don't speak to my mother doesn't mean we can't be different. <laughs> <clears throat> the green room, please. Mr. Borden Eisler, thank you. Oh, I'm gonna have to guess. Is that it? It's so bad you can't even tell me? Oh, words can't form in your mouth. It's so horrible, right? Oh, come on. I'm a strong person, Roy. Tell me quickly. I'll get over it. Borden, Mr. Hubley. Can you come up to 719? Yes, now. <sighs> she wanted to talk to me because she couldn't bear to say it to both of us at the same time. The reason she's locked herself in the bathroom is, uh, well, she's afraid. Afraid? What is she afraid of, that Borden doesn't love her? Not that Borden doesn't love her. That she doesn't love Borden? No, not that she doesn't love Borden. Then what is she afraid of? She's afraid of what they're going to become. Oh, I don't understand. Think about it. What's there to think about? What are they going to become? They love each other. They'll get married. They'll have children. They'll grow older. They'll become like us. Makes you stop and think. Oh, Doesn't yeah. it? I never thought about that, but... I don't think we're so bad, do you? I mean, all right, so we yell and scream a little, so we fight and curse and aggravate each other. So you blame me for being a lousy mother and I accuse you of being a rotten husband. It doesn't mean we're not happy, does it? Well, does it? She wants something better. Hmm. Hello, Borden. And that concludes Act 3 of Neil Simon's The Plaza Suite.